All right, so I'm about to start a seven day dry fast. I'm gonna chug this liter of water with lime, salt, and apple cider vinegar. This video is for entertainment purposes only. Dry fasting can be especially dangerous. Always consult your physician before trying fasting of any kind. This is a vlog style video. If you'd like to skip ahead, check out the timestamps in the description. So I've never done a seven day dry fast. We'll see how this goes to health. <sighs> A lot of liquid. We're gonna try to start it at midnight here. Midnight on Wednesday. Gonna go up to 168, I think. <laughs> okay. So, I am going to start my fast. 11.54 on Wednesday. Here we go. I am dry fasting now. Can you see that? <coughs> Man, there's a lot of liquid, but you gotta get hydrated before, and I was eating a lot to try to get some food in before. All right, yeah, I'm gonna check in as time goes on. Feeling pretty full right now. Feel pretty good. Let's see what I weighed here before. 156.6. All right, guys, so this is day one, the next morning, about nine hours in. I feel pretty good right now. I usually don't start feeling hungry till around three, and then after that, as my body's glycogen stores start depleting, my body's saying, start eating, and that's difficult. Once you get over that hump, actually around day two, once you're in ketosis, then you're not hungry, then I'm feeling pretty good. It's usually around day three or day four that I start questioning, should I do this, but I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna do it. Do it for health, all right. So why dry fast? Why do you dry fast? Well, why fast at all? Autophagy, my friends. That's all I have to say about that. They've actually done studies and found that if you do a water fast for three days, you'll completely reset your immune system. The body will actually eat all of the weakened immune cells and then it will use stem cells to make new ones. They've also found this in rats. They have fasted them and found that it increases their stem cells in their intestinal lining. So as you get older, your intestines stop being able to repair themselves, which could be one of the contributors to diseases of old age like Alzheimer's and whatnot. So, if it's able to increase stem cells in the gut, it may be able to do other parts of the body. Now, I've been doing as much healthy things as I can, getting my sleep right, getting my diet right, exercising, doing yoga, meditation, I started intermittent fasting, and jumped into a one-day dry fast, and from the detox symptoms, I definitely had to stop at 24 hours because that was, I was getting up and I could feel that I was getting dizzy. Almost like I was really hung over or something. So I think that was my body detoxing. Then after that, I jumped into doing a two day dry fast and I did that for a while. Yeah, so the last couple months I've just slowly been increasing my dry fasting duration and I had done a six day dry fast, which was very, very difficult. I think day five, I was at the grocery store buying a bunch of drinks that I'm never gonna drink, but I think my subconscious was saying, Let's prepare for when we can finally drink. Bought like eight different kinds of coconut water because I wanted to do a taste test and see which one I like the best, but I'm probably not gonna do that. But I was not maybe right in the head completely. But yeah, so I'm gonna try to do seven days. This guy, I can't remember the name. His name's like Sergey something. He's got a free PDF about medical dry fasting. Basically, a lot of the people he did, he starts them off with a five day dry fast. That's medically supervised, mind you, but five day dry fast. And then the second one, he does a nine day dry fast. So there's plenty of people that have done nine day dry fast, so I can totally do seven. It's just that, man, at like day five, for one thing, your mouth tastes like God awful. That's probably the worst part about it. Your mouth tastes so bad. Because I think the acetone, when your body's running on ketones, it makes acetone or something. And that's basically what you're tasting, like a sweet, kind of nasty. Don't kiss anyone or breathe in anyone's face in the fast. Yeah, and then your lips, man, your lips get so dry, they get messed up, and that's awful. People are like, so what's wrong with you? <laughs> well, I'm avoiding putting anything on my body and drinking anything, so. It's something I've been building up to. I wouldn't recommend just jumping into it. I think most people that have ever done it, even the people that were doing the medical dry fasting, I think they had some experience doing a long water fast or something. You gotta get your body used to running on ketones. So you have to be fat adapted, which I think took a while for me. One of the things too, like, you wanna eat a keto dinner that night too. So if you eat a ketogenic dinner, that'll just help you burn through your glycogen.
glycogen a little faster. I used to eat a ton of carbs that night and think, oh, I got but that's really just going against what you're trying to do. So yeah, and then I, uh, you do apple cider vinegar because apple cider vinegar will trigger AMPK, which helps you get into ketosis faster. Just got to work. I'll see you all later. Even work and to go teach back at the studio. Oh, it's cold. Cold in January. Yeah, so working is not bad the first two or three days. First two days, definitely not bad. It's funny, like, two days used to be hard. It used to be really hard. But now it's like two days is nothing. I can do two days, like, no problem. Like, and I'd lose no productivity. So that's kind of cool, actually. That's like a cool super power. Like, oh, this guy cannot eat or drink water for two days and function perfectly normally. That's pretty cool. I used to be like, oh my god, my blood sugar's low. I have to eat every few hours or something like that, which is just ridiculous. You know, I never liked eating in the morning, but I started forcing myself to because I thought I should. So stupid. I always try to do the 16-8 intermittent fasting, but sometimes it's more like 14. 10 just because I teach in the evenings I don't get home till late and sometimes I'm trying to get some more calories in the day and I just got to eat before bed which I don't believe is the healthiest thing I believe that you probably want to give yourself at least two hours before going to bed probably three is better because when you sleep it's your body's chance to clean out your brain basically I think that's why when you don't get enough sleep you feel messed up in your head because I think the toxins and the chemicals from throughout the day are still in there. So yeah, if you don't eat before bed, then all that energy that your body would be using to digest food is now going into repairing your body and detoxing your brain and all that. I don't have a study to back that up, but I've heard it from a lot of different sources and it makes a lot of sense. And I do feel better when I do that. It might even be worth having a day of calorie deficit just so that you can get that benefit. I don't know what's worse. Depends on what your goals are. Yep, so 4.30 here and I am feeling a little hungry, a little thirsty, but not too bad actually. I'm getting pretty used to this. It's just like another time doing it. Car time is is jazz time. This is how I get through the traffic. Drum solos. I've heard cooler drum solos, I'm not gonna lie. Sometimes hit or miss here on 88.5. We are almost home. I'm gonna meet a student here for an hour piano lesson. Hope he practiced. Because if he didn't, I'm gonna tell him to practice next time and I'm gonna hope that he does. And if he doesn't, I might talk to his parents or something and he's not gonna get a sticker if he doesn't. Play it right. He's all about that sticker, but he's not gonna get it if uh, he doesn't deliver the goods. You gotta play the right notes, but also the right time, but sorry, it's kind of the deal. That's half the music is the time, so. Alrighty, we are pulling in here. Back home in the garage. Here we are. Home sweet home. Messy, messy. Yeah, I know, I still got my Christmas stuff up. Uh, that's where it's gonna happen, that's where the lesson happens. All right, see you later. How old is this piano? This is a piano from the 70s. So you're saying it's 100 years old, basically, because 100 years ago was the 70s. Okay. How long ago is it? Um, I think it's 78, so that wouldn't be 100 years. I don't know. How would you have a piano from 100 years ago? Yep, so I am going to go teach. It's 7.13. I teach at other people's houses too. So yeah, maybe like a little bit of hunger pains, but nothing too crazy. I feel great mentally. My stomach is a little hungry. Express yourself. Balmy 20 degrees out right now. That's Fahrenheit for you foreigners. I am in the U.S. Des Etas Uni, Jabita, Minnesota. Welcome to the Chango. Driving home. 9 p.m. Feeling pretty good, a little bit hungry, but I feel great. Like, my mind feels amazing. Got a couple great students tonight, so that's always super fun. But I go home, go to bed fairly early. And that's what's nice, too. When you're fasting, it's like, it's just nice to go to bed because <laughs> you're hungry. And it's like, yeah. So, alrighty.
Well, it's like 11.30, can't sleep, this happens a lot. Sometimes I think the ketosis causes insomnia. Yeah, I got shades on because my iPad has a night shift, but it doesn't block all the blue light. Thanks, Apple. I don't know what the deal is with that. I got red lights in my room, but this iPad. Still got the blue lights, so I'm gonna maybe get up and do something and then try again in an hour to go to sleep. All right, guys, day two here. Feeling pretty good. My face is starting to get a little dry. Other than that, I'm feeling good. A Little bit thirsty, a little bit hungry, but nothing too crazy. I'm down about 10 pounds, which is mostly water weight. I don't think that I've probably burned through much fat at this point, but yeah, when you lose all your glycogen, you lose a lot of water with that too. I'm gonna check to see where where I am in ketosis right now. I got my meter here to get a good sample. I take out my test strip. Get some good blood going there. Looks pretty good. Okay, so right now I'm 1.0 millimol, so I'm only in light ketosis. 40 hours in and I'm still not in heavy ketosis. I started off with these test strips. Problem with these is that it's only showing the ketones that are leaving your body. It's actually not showing your blood levels of ketones. So it's not completely accurate, but it's a lot cheaper than a meter and it'll get you started. But if you want to be serious about this, you might as well just jump in and get a meter. All right, so light ketosis and I'm about 37 hours in. All right, so yeah, I'll probably check tomorrow to see where I'm at. All right, see ya. Free to work. I think if I could have strategically planned it, it would have been better to start on Monday so that the last two days would be on Saturday and Sunday and I could just lay around the house. You guys going to work on six and seven are going to be brutal, but you got to do what you got to do, right? You got to fit it in. You got to fit that fasting in somehow. It ain't going to be easy. No one ever said it was easy. I'm not saying this is easy. This is not easy. why they call it Minnesota. Hey, so just got in the car here. It's gonna heat it up before I drive. It's a Minnesota thing. Yep, it's like 6.43. Feeling pretty good, feel great. I feel cold, I feel really cold. Other than that, I feel really good mentally and physically. The hunger's kinda gone away. I mean, I'm a little thirsty, but I'm not like, it's not like a problem. Whew, man, it's cold. All right, I think I'm gonna Start driving. Oh god. Cause I need some driving gloves. Boy do I need some driving gloves. Oh my god. Yeah, just driving by the brewery. I mean well distillery I should say. You know, I do miss drinking. I haven't had a drink in almost six months. Well no, five months because there was the bachelor party. Oh boy, was there the bachelor party weekend. There certainly was that. Yeah, I guess it's been about four months, but just doing healthy stuff. Hopefully it pays off for me. I feel great. My mind is very sharp. I'm in the best shape I've ever been probably, as far as how my body feels. So that's really nice. But it's still a part of me that really likes to be a wild child. Someday maybe. Or maybe I'll find myself a, a woman that likes to be healthy. I feel like that would be easy to be healthy. If I'm with a woman that likes to party, then it's all too easy to fall into that. Netflix, food, and partying. That's an easy relationship to fall into. It's not what I want. It'd be nice to find a woman that likes to run and exercise or likes to eat healthy. Not necessarily all the time, but you know, 95 to 99% of the time eating healthy. That would be sweet. And if she was sweet too, personality was. So I'm driving home, gonna work on the computer. Got some uh, songs that I recorded that I gotta work on, so, all right. So it's like, 46 hours in. One of the things that you wanna check is if your kidneys are filtering. That shows that you're detoxing. So as you can see here, see the sediment on the bottom there. So my kidneys are filtering. So a lot of times people's kidneys just aren't filtering. So when you dry fast, it's a good way to detox your body. Yeah, so I'm gonna go to bed now and uh, take on the morrow strong. Take it on strong. All right. 
Alright, it's like 7.30. Slept for maybe like 8-ish hours, which is awesome. Really nice. Good sign. That's an update. Good morning. Day 3 here. Feeling a bit tired. I got the day off. It's Saturday, so that's nice. Sometimes it actually seems easier when there's things to do that day when you're fasting. When you don't have anything to do, it's almost like... You just want the day to be over with, but I've got some work to do on the computer, so I'll be able to keep busy that way. Usually it's good to go for a walk, like a mile walk. It's just good to get the blood flowing, but uh, it's like three degrees out right now, so we'll see if I decide to do that. So I am 63 hours in, almost 64 in my fast. I'm gonna check my uh, ketone levels again. Hopefully I'm deeper into it by now. God, I don't like doing this, but it's all good. This is pretty cool technology actually, really like that I can do this without going to the doctor. All right, see here. Oh wow, okay so I'm in like really strong ketosis right now. Wow, that happened fast. Okay, yeah, so it's just 3.8 moles. Okay, 3.8 moles. Yeah, so like optimal ketosis is like 1.5 to three millimoles. So I'm in more ketosis than I would need to be for weight loss, but I'm actually doing this for the autophagy benefits to try to heal my body. So yeah, I'm not exactly sure what the optimal is for that compared to losing weight. Right now I'm burning on mostly fat, which is why I probably feel a lot more tired. Wow, that's cool. I didn't expect that to jump because yesterday I was just at one. I'm just gonna take it easy today, maybe go for a walk or something. I'm gonna keep it real. Real chill, get my little kit here, kind of fun. 3.8, show that one more time. I did it. God, I wonder what I'm gonna be at the end of it. I don't know that I'll check every day. Maybe I'll check at the end, cause like, Pricking my finger a bunch is uh, not fun. This is day four. I've been laying in bed most of the day. Stayed up till like 12.45, had some friends come over. We jammed, played some music. Yeah, it's uh, almost three days in here jamming with the buds. Hey guys, I guess I should do this. Hi guys, what's hey. up? Is this live? Yeah, so jamming. You gotta keep the spirits high when you're fasting. Right, Phil? I'm fasting. Yeah, we're all fasting together. We're in a Woo! cult. We're in a fasting cult. It's a cult. Yeah, so. We drank Kool-Aid at the end of it. And uh, one of my buddies brought over his Nintendo Switch, which I kind of thought was lame at first, but it was actually pretty fun. So the far right button and uh, the left baby. one is your weapon. These two don't do it. Nope. baby. Sometimes you so gotta when you switch go it up. The jump, okay. You have the lamest YouTube channel ever. <laughs> yeah, I know. This is the moment so we're answering. We're all, all right. good right now. Hey, this yes. is just, uh, this is B-roll. Yo, yo! That was fun to be social. It's healthy to be social. I'm feeling pretty good, you know, I'm kind of like a little loopy-ish. My lips are starting to get dry, which happens. By the end of it, they're gonna be probably pretty nasty. My mouth is getting real gross. That sucks. But yeah, let's see, I'm uh, 88 hours into my fast. I'm over halfway, baby! You can see that. Yeah, so I'm probably just gonna work on the computer again, maybe do some recording. I don't think I'm gonna go for a walk because it is nine degrees out and I'm not feeling, we'll see if I feel it. I've always kind of wondered if dry fasting really is better than water fasting. I know that you probably get into ketosis faster and well, the idea is that you make your own water from your fat. So your fat is made up of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, so your body can make water from your fat and it's the most pure water that you're gonna have but I think once you're in ketosis once you've maybe accelerated the process with dry fasting then at that point why not do the water fasting the water probably helps you detox a little bit I've been looking into doing like a longer medically supervised fast this woman Christina Gore had this brain tear in her the covering of her brain tore and didn't heal for 16 years and she did two 
two 40 day water fasts and her headache went away and it never came back. So that was a water fast. I actually ended up getting a hold of Dr. Goldhammer over at True North, which is where she went. And they use distilled water. Everyone always tells you, oh, distilled water is going to make you sick. It's going to leach out your minerals and stuff like that. But if part of the reason why you dry fast is to have pure water, well, if you're putting pure water in, then I don't see how the dry fasting would be better than water fasting with pure water. Wouldn't that be better? He assured me that the distilled water that they use is, is safe. They don't supplement with any minerals at all. They don't do enemas before. But yeah, he said dry fasting is not what you want to do. And here I am dry fasting. But I wonder now, maybe what I'll do is, it took me about, was it 64 hours that I tested to get into like heavy ketosis. Maybe what I'll do is I'll do a three day dry fast and then I'll switch to a water fast with distilled water and I'll go maybe as long as I can. It makes sense that the extra water will help you flush the toxins out of your body, which would help you heal. I'm pretty interested about that. I'm over halfway, so I'm just going to keep going. It's Monday tomorrow, so it's back to working. That'll be day five. Tuesday's going to be really tough because... I've got like six music lessons back to back. Man, I'm gonna really need to find some strength that day. And then Wednesday, I've got a couple lessons. Okay, I'll see you guys tomorrow. I had a hard time falling asleep, maybe fell asleep at like one. Just woke up at 3.15, so I only got hours of sleep. Probably read a little bit, try again. It's just pretty normal for this deep in the fast. Sleeping gets harder, not exactly sure why. Desire for water is really strong. Yeah, it's usually the end of the fifth day where I start fantasizing about drinking water. So I've got, let's see, 68 hours left, so just under three days. Woo woo! All right, day five. We're about 107 hours in, and almost 108. It's day five. Going to get an estimate for my car because one of my students' parents backed into my car. I went and got an estimate at a place my dad trusts, and it was like she thought it was going to be a few hundred bucks. The place said $2,800, so she asked if I'd get a second opinion, so I thought I'd do that for her. The nice guy that I am. Day five is tough, man. My lips are super dry, very uncomfortable. My mouth is just nasty, but you know, it's funny, I'm still urinating probably like twice a day. Still getting rid of toxins. I checked my weight this morning. I weighed 137.2. So I lost like three pounds in a day. Take that, Jenny Craig. I don't know how much it's water. That first uh, 10 pounds I lost was probably mostly water, but I think actually a lot of that is glycogen too. When you eat carbs, you store glycogen in your muscles. And when you burn through all that glycogen, a lot of that um, potentially is the weight as well. Yeah, I slept for two hours, woke up at three, watched a show, and then listened to a book on tape, fell asleep to that, and woke back up around eight. So I got a good amount of sleep. You really want to get sleep if you decide to do this because it's when you sleep that your body really does the autophagy. It's really hard to sleep though. It's like your body thinks it needs to get food and water. It's like gonna die but yeah so I, I just gotta get through today and then tomorrow and then the next day and then before I go to bed on Wednesday night I'm going to break my fast with a glass of water oh my god it's gonna be so good you have no idea it's funny you think you know what it feels like to be thirsty but tell you dry fast for man I'd probably say at least five days or so man that water's like the vacation you've been waiting for all year you're like so excited about it you're like it's all you can think about yeah Okay. Alright, my name's Koo. Any insurance involved at all? If it's like a few hundred bucks, they want to pay for it. If okay. It's like oh, what's, what are we looking more at? More than that. I can tell you nothing's a few hundred bucks anymore. Yeah, and I don't think you can just replace the cover. Not the lens, no. Light, if you right? did, at that point, you're better off just replacing the whole light. 700 bucks right off the get-go. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, and then when you got to sand out the bumper and all that. Alright, well, I'll take some photos and then we'll type it up and then there's going to be a lot of dollars in this. So, I don't know oh, how yeah. happy they're going to be. Very fast. 
So if you're ready, let's go over there. 1100 bucks. I called the dealership direct just to figure out how much it costs. See what they want to do and go from there. Thanks, man. All right. So, all right. Turns out the place they wanted me to go is actually more money. But that's good. So now I know that that place that my dad recommended actually is a legit place. It's just really expensive. So I guess the moral of the story is don't crash into someone else's car because it's probably going to be $3,000. Jeez, man, that's rough. That's like a lot of money or something. But yeah, Cup Vang there, he seemed like a cool dude. I got a really good vibe from that place. But yeah, they said they, I think, if I remember correctly, that was definitely more money. I think like a thousand dollars more than the other place. But that's good. So I did them my best to just try to be nice and help them out. I'm gonna go pick up some avocados. I try to eat one to two avocados a day. And when I break my fast on Wednesday, well Thursday I'm gonna wanna eat some avocados. Sometimes it takes a few days for them to get ripe. So I'll probably go pick up a couple of those. Oh yeah, baby, Lake Winds. That's where I go, man. That's my local grocery store. Oh, it smells like garlic. Ew. I don't like garlic. I don't. I don't. That's a balmy, balmy nine degrees out right now. Oh yeah. Do you want to go ahead and you get huh? Go ahead and make it. I don't have to go ahead of you. You sure? Yeah, I'm fine. I'm not in a hurry today. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Thank you. I got six avocados here, Anthony. I tried it again too fast. That's right. Me. I don't need another bag. You can round up too. Hi right, man. Good to see you. See ya. Take care. Me too. All right. I got my avocados. I'm gonna head to work. Just try to get through the day. Then I got a couple lessons to teach after work. And then I'm gonna go home and just probably crash. Thing is, like, you don't wanna crash too early. I feel like it's harder to fall, well, at least for me, it's harder to fall asleep, but they say the best, uh, you get the best sleep between 10 and two. So if you get asleep by 10, that's probably the best. But yeah, usually I can go to bed around midnight, but when you drive fasting, it's like pretty easy to just say, I wanna go to bed, because there's nothing else to do, so. Day six. I am about 133 hours in. Snowed last night, so that's fun. It's fun when it snows, it's very magical. But I'm not troubling because there's uh, circumstances going on that make me feel a little less motivated, let's just say. Lips are really chapped. My mouth is terribly gross. My gums are starting to look unhealthy. One of the things, if you ever decide to do something like this, obviously talk to your doctor first and build up to it. There's some medical conditions where you wouldn't want to fast, like if you're type one diabetic or something like that. Yeah, so what you'll find is before you start your fast, you're gonna to want to brush your teeth real well. I floss, then I use a water flosser too, and then I brush probably a good two minutes. I've got a Sonicare so I get every spot. It like does a timer when you're supposed to switch locations. And then I bought some TheraBreath Periodontist like gum health mouthwash. So I try to do that just to get my gums back to health because yeah, they start to look pretty bad. So that's upsetting, but uh, I'm doing pretty good. As far as mood today, got a big day today. After work, I've got six lessons, so that's gonna be tough. But after that, I'm just gonna go home and crash. Just lay in bed probably. And then I just got one more day. And then and get that sweet, sweet, syrupy, silky H2O in my mouth. Man, it's gonna be good. Words fail me. It's like, it's magical. I would say magical maybe describes it. It's like for the that. average person that isn't dry fasting for a male, it'd be like you're in some tropical lagoon and there's like a bar there that like has your favorite drinks, pina coladas, margaritas, whatever. And there's just the most beautiful woman and just like this atmospheric ambient music playing, but there's no one else there. There's no band and there's not even a stereo. It's just there in the air. 
music and you don't have a care in the world. That's what it's like when you finally drink water. It's the simple things in life. You would take water for granted, man. I took water for granted. Make sure that you get good water. The whole thing with the fluoride, I was drinking water out of my fridge for the longest time and it had fluoride in it and I had no idea. It had a filter, but it didn't filter out fluoride. So now, fluoride at certain levels is safe. That's what all the studies say and all the science, but you know, it's just another variable that you don't need, if you brush your teeth, you don't need fluoride in your water. So brush your teeth and drink pure water. I have my reverse osmosis, but I don't have my distiller yet. But yeah, I think I'm gonna probably just drink distilled water mostly. And then my reverse osmosis would be like my backup for cooking with or drinking if I run out of distilled. Cause you know, it takes time to do that. I'll probably have some bottles, even though I don't like bottled water, the plastic. There's this dude, I can't remember what his name is, but he was sick and he did a blood cleaning machine and there was microplastic in his blood. They cleaned his blood and the doctor's like, I don't know what this is, but we'll send this to a lab. It turned out it was microplastic that his body could not break down. So yeah, if you use that thin bottled water plastic all the time, you gotta think sometimes little microscopic fragments break off into the water and then you drink that and it gets in your body and your body might not be able to get rid of it. So I'm gonna try to use less plastic. It's hard because it's so nice and convenient, but glass is just the way you wanna go. You might be fine, but it's just, again, it's another variable in the health equation that you can just get rid of easily. So just get rid of it. It's like fluoride in the water, you know? Now if you're maybe living on a budget or something like that, and you're not unhealthy and you're feel fine, I mean, then drink tap water. Go for it. All the studies say it's safe. Well, some areas like have higher arsenic levels, so on the website of your city, you can go look and see what the water quality is. So you could do that and then see, but man, drinking chlorine and fluoride just doesn't feel right to me. Most filters will filter out the chlorine and most everything, but a lot of them don't filter out chluoride. Yeah, that's about it. What did I weigh? I weighed 134.8 this morning. So I'm down another two and a half pounds or something like that. So yeah, it seems like I lose at least two pounds a day, maybe two and a half. Thankfully, I've only got one more day, so I might be down like 132. Yeah, I think like 130 would be as low as I'd ever want to go. If I got below 130, I'd be like, I gotta stop. I don't really know the science behind that, but I'm just thinking 140 is my lowest healthy BMI, but that's a BMI for someone that's hydrated and probably has some food in their intestines. That could be an additional 10 pounds right there. All the glycogen stores in your muscles could be an additional 10 pounds. So I figure 130 might be like a 140 once I just start eating and drinking again. I think I'll gain like 10 pounds back real quick, which just seemed to be the case for me. I'm feeling pretty good. I wouldn't do any exercise. Did something I probably shouldn't have done. I was getting a light bulb out of my ceiling. I jumped down on my hardwood floor, which like my ankle was like, oh, like just a little bit sore after. I was like, oh, I probably shouldn't be jumping down from heights when I'm in this state. You really want to be careful with your body because you're going to be prone to injury when you're so dehydrated. One thing that is really nice about fasting, I've struggled my whole life really, but it's gotten a lot better since I got my diet right. I always had problems with my sinuses being congested, but my sinuses are just completely clear every time I fast. Which makes me wonder, something I'm eating is probably still doing it to me. Yeah, every time you eat, really, there's some sort of inflammatory effect. I'm just getting to work, so I'll check in later, see ya. I just left my first lesson. It's actually surprisingly easy. I'm actually in a pretty good place right now. My next lesson got delayed by a half hour because apparently the mom can't find the kids at the ski hill or something. So that'll be nice actually for me because it'll be nice to do a half hour shorter. So I'm just gonna use the time to get some gas. Don't really need to get gas right now, but I'm close to a quarter tank and you really wanna in the Cold Minnesota winter, keep your tank at least quarter full, so I might as well fill it up to kill some time. One of the things I don't know if I've mentioned, you're gonna really wanna, especially after like the third day of dry fasting, keep your mouth closed as much as possible. Breathe through your nose because your mouth is gonna dry out and it's awful. So if you could not talk to anyone, <laughs> That'd be great too. Especially if your breath isn't good and your lips get all chapped. That's what sucks about it. I hate looking like a, like I can't take care of myself or something. <laughs> yeah, just gonna get through today and then tomorrow and then I'm gonna drink that glass of water, baby. Mmm, gosh, it's gonna be so good. It's my vacation at the end of the year, drinking a glass of water. Yeah, you can see my lips are so bad. Wow, this is a long way. Green, baby. Alright, let's 
gasoline. 91 octane for my sweet puppy. You're watching with Sunny. I think the nation with people posting for the Memphis National. All night long. Pump four. 75. Alright, there's 26. Thank you. Well, I got five minutes to kill, so I think I'm gonna bust out the uke for a bit. Yeah, singing is actually hard when you haven't to drink any water for six days. It's a little dry in back there. All right. Interestingly enough, it's the only song I know how to play on the ukulele. But it's fun. It's just like a guitar. Tuning's different, but all the scales and chords are the same on the top four strings, like the spacing, so. Get a ukulele. This is a baritone, so that means like it's got like a lower string on the bottom. Was like a soprano or whatever, like has like a higher string on the bottom, which is like totally like weird, man, because like, <laughs> like, I don't know, man, like you gotta get that low, man. <laughs> it's <laughs> all about that. Oh my god. All right, the fasting's starting to get to me. I gotta get out of here. Put this ukulele away. A day in the life of Che Peasel. Oh, Sheasel. Call me Chase, too. Oh, that's fun. Some people call me Che Po. That was my name in high school. It's kind of like my artist name. My production company's called Che Po Productions. So, yeah. Che Pizzle. I've also been called Chisel. That was my festival name when I used to go to a lot of festivals. I like Chisel. It's got a nice sound to it. All right, man. So I got four lessons here and then one more lesson. I got five more lessons. Wow, math. <laughs> math is like tough or something. I like to do math in my head because it keeps me sharp. Because like when I like get like really sharp, like I feel like I can cut through the bullshit. Like that's why I like to be sharp because like the bullshit gets really like really tough to cut through. So like if I could just like cut through the bullshit by being sharp with my mathematics skills. Holder for my phone is so janky. Gotta buy a new one. Shouldn't be slooping like that. Slooping all over the place. Like, come on. I ain't driving like a maniac. Stop slooping, right? Oh man, the heat is too much. Yeah, fasting's cool and all, but like, it's really cool not to fast. <laughs> That's almost like the cooler version of the two. Like, if you can not fast. But yeah, I really think everyone should probably do like a three day water fast, I guess. Well, if you could do a dry fast. I think doing like a three day dry fast, like once every month. Well, maybe that's too much. Maybe every like, at least once a year, you should do an extended fast, I think. I do a whole food plant based diet just because, from my research, that's the healthiest diet. If like eating meat was healthy, I think it would be justified in killing the animals for the meat. Because it's like, well, it's like what we're supposed to do, but since it's unhealthy, it's like you're killing these animals just for your pleasure, but it's actually hurting your body at the same time. So, just doesn't make sense. Yeah, I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, I remember now. So, if you want to eat like garbage and like get atherosclerosis, God, atherosclerosis, got it so hard for me to say. If you want to do that, just go do a fasting retreat for like a week every year and you can just like reset your body, clean out your arteries and stuff. Depending on how bad you eat, you might have to do longer than that. I just assume just not put the junk in your body, not have to fast. Like I would never do a long fast like this unless I was trying to heal my body. Calling up, looks like they're home. It's a good sign. All right, see you a bit. 
God, these people are notorious for just not letting me in. There's people in there, I can hear them. I've rung the doorbell, knocked down the window. I think the doorbell's broken or something. But it's like, let me in, I see you in there. It's cold out here. Hey, George, let me in. Thank you, thank you. Can you hear the doorbell? No. All right, how you doing? All right, who's going first? You going first? All right. Okay, pretty good, pretty good. All right, I made it through. I just got one more lesson tonight, then I'm gonna go home and crash. I'm tired. It's about 144 hours in. I just got one day left. I fell asleep for like an hour, but I don't think I'm gonna fall back asleep. So I've been putting off doing any walking just cause it's been so cold. It's nine degrees out right now. I think I need to go for a walk, probably at least a mile and burn off some of this energy so I can get some sleep cause I am not down to stay awake all night tonight. That's not gonna happen. So let's go. It's really cold out, but it feels good. It's almost like the cold reminds you of being hydrated in a way. I'm going to super fall, which is going to be fun. Not much to see out here, you guys. Sorry about that. It's the house, so yeah, I guess I'll probably just check back in when I'm heading back in. I right, see you. Here we are. Sweet home. It's very, very cold out. I'm very cold. Oh my god. All right. Yeah, hands really cold. That was like a hour long walk or so. Put my a load of wash in before I went on the walk, so I'm gonna put that in the dryer and then try to go back to bed. Okay, so one of the things you're gonna wanna do if you decide to drive fast is get some sort of gloves. These are food prep gloves. Figure these are probably the least toxic, so I'm not absorbing something through my skin. But yeah, I'm doing a hard dry fast. So that means that I am not touching any water at all. All right, starting my dryer. I'm gonna throw another load of wash in here before I go to bed. All right, so I'm gonna go to bed. I'm gonna try to go to bed. See y'all on the morrow for my last, uh, for the last day of the drive fest. All right, yeah. All right, it is 7 a.m. on day seven. 17 hours to go. Super excited for the end of the day. So originally I was gonna go grocery shopping after teaching tonight, but I woke up and I'm wired, so I'm gonna just try to use this time. That way I'll get home later and just crash. Uh, yeah, it's gonna be nice. Sorry, I dropped the ball here. Yep. Alright. 
cheese? Oh, I see. Yep, so be warned when you're fasting, you will buy more food and drink than originally planned. Alright, got my groceries. It's a really great way to kill time. Just a fair warning. Going grocery shopping when you're dry fasted for seven days. Be prepared to buy more food and weird juice and stuff that you wouldn't normally buy. I just couldn't help myself. I know I'll probably be like, I don't want to drink any juice, but my subconscious sure wants to drink it now. Juice really doesn't go bad, so I can drink it over time. Alright, so yeah, I was going to unload these groceries and go to work and then teach. Come home and just wait it out. Man, I can't believe it. So close. 16 hours left. Seven, baby. Really excited about today. Because today, I've got a glass of water to look forward to. Man. I gotta say, this morning I was, actually no, it was last night as I was trying to go to bed, everything in my mind was saying, you know what, you did good, Chase. Let's just drink water now. But, I said, nope, we took it this far. We've already done a six day dry fast, so. There's always a part of me that just is like worried, like this can't be good. Like going for my walk last night, in the cold. I was just thinking like, am I gonna die out here? But no, I was fine. The other thing that's weird is that when I first started dry fasting, it'd be like day three. It'd be like driving to go teach somewhere. Whoa, hello person walking very slow across the road. And I'd be like freezing. I'd have like my car heat on like full and a jacket on and a scarf and a hat and my seat heater on full and I'd just be freezing. And now it's like, it's been cold this week, but I feel, I've been feeling hot. I actually, this morning, I set my heat down to 62 degrees and it like felt good. It's weird, it's almost like the cold, like feeling colder makes, it almost seems like the air feels more moist or something. It like reminds me of being hydrated. Yeah, it's like my body's really gotten used to this because I feel like warm now. I'm also doing the Wim Hof method, so every time I shower, I always end with at least five minutes of as cold as it can go. And you know, it's January now in Minnesota. I started in October and the water wasn't, you know, it was cold. I mean, it was cold for me, but now it's like the water's like really cold. I've got city water, so I'm sure it's dependent a little bit on the air temperature, the ground temperature. But yeah, so I just gotta get through work and then I just have two lessons today. I don't have grocery shopping. I might get my car washed because it's filthy. Then I'm just gonna go home and just wait it out. It's like, that's almost the worst time when you've got nothing to do and just hours to kill, so. My parents gave me their old Windows computer a long time ago and I couldn't get it to work, but I started up the other day, it was working great. So I uh, actually bought an old computer. I was using some old computer games I used to play when I was a kid, back when I would like sit for like five hours and play computer games. Last time I fasted, I played this game called The Sims 1. Play that in Age of Empires 2 and uh, it just kills time like nothing other. I mean your body doesn't feel good just sitting like that but it just really helps kill the time so I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully I'll probably be able to kill like at least three hours like that before my body's like maybe hey, we should do something else but yeah if I get home at like 6 30 then yeah I've got five and a half hours to kill. Play some games on the computer, watch like a movie or something on my iPad bed if I feel like lying down. But yeah, I'm doing it, man. I, it's crazy that I'm doing this, man. It's unbelievable. If you would have told me six months ago, Chase, you're gonna, in six months, you're gonna go seven days without any food or water. I would be like, what? No way. It's just so crazy, because there's been so many times where it's like, it's been during like a day, and I'm like, God, I need to eat something, or I need to drink, I'm so thirsty, I need water. It's like, I didn't need it, I wanted it. 
And you know what's weird to think about is it's like, it's almost like even tonight, I feel like I need it more than ever, but I don't know, I guess it goes to what's the definition of need. I think the longest someone's ever gone dry fasting is like 13 days maybe. I'm not exactly sure, but I mean, I don't know. I hope that there's more studies on this. There's barely any studies on water only fasting, but uh, those studies are very promising. But yeah, just dry fat, it just sounds insane. It sounds completely insane. Like, what are you talking about? I was talking to my mom the other day. I, t I told my brother what I was doing. My brother's like, what? And I think it was like, it might have been like day two. He's like, wait, you haven't had any water for two days? I'm like, nope. And it was funny because he was like, oh, you should like document this or something. I was like, ha, ah, that's funny. I'm doing a YouTube vlog about it right this week. I'm doing seven days, which I thought sounded, you know, seven days sounds like a nice, you know, one week. Yeah, so somehow my mom found out, he must have told my mom, and she's like, so I heard you fasting? So you're just drinking water? I didn't want to tell her that it wasn't drinking water. I just said, I'm not eating any food. So that was, I was being truthful. So I'm not eating any food, but I did not, I neither confirmed nor denied water consumption. I wasn't ready to have the talk with her about what I'm doing. But yeah, I just gotta get through work. Just gotta get through work, man. Lessons, car wash, video games. Computer games, I guess. You gotta say computer games. And then maybe a show or something. I just gotta, just gotta crank it out. I guess I'll probably I'll test my ketones one more time just to see. I'm obviously in like heavy ketosis, but I wonder like how much heavier it can get. I'd be interested to see. Yeah, and I didn't weigh myself yet today because I figured I'd do that at the end, right before I drink water. But I'm like probably like 132 or something. Yeah, tomorrow morning I'm gonna cook my steamed vegetables, drink the water from the steam, eat cauliflower, and I just decided for that whole day I'm not gonna eat anything but like vegetables and fruit. I think that that's probably good to, like the longest fast I've done too, is just like not put any beans or nuts or grains. Just like really focus on eating hydrating foods, drinking lots of liquids, and getting lots of minerals and stuff like that. I was always kind of jumping in, but the way my schedule works out, I'm gonna take 10 days off before my next fast. At this point, I'm gonna just probably take it more leisurely, probably won't do more than like a five day dry fast. But I think what I'm gonna do, I'll do like a three or a five day dry fast, you know, something in that range, and then maybe do like a few days of water fast just to see how that feels. Or maybe try just water fasting. Awesome. Well, I'm gonna head into work and I'll check in later. All right, see you guys. All right, just finished my last lesson. I'm gonna go get a car wash and then I'm gonna go home and chill. Man, I, what is it? I've got five hours and 25 minutes left. Whew, man, it has been a wild ride. I am so ready to be done. I'm at that point, ready to be done. Yeah, it's amazing how I'm just craving drinks, like subtly sweet drinks, like carbonated. Maybe just like a shot or two of like juice, but like carbonated mineral water and like fresh lime or lemon juice and like maybe some like apple cider vinegar, like half a shot of that or something. God, that sounds so good. But I'm definitely breaking my fast with water. That's what I'm breaking my fast with for sure. Pure tasting water. Yeah, my windshield's so dirty I need a wash. At the car wash. Do 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 do. In car washer. Yeah, I get like a Dover wash, I guess. Yeah. Hey, dog. Good night. Two. Oh yeah, gonna wash this hunk of junk. That's no, not junk. Just needs a fix. Oh yeah. At the car wash. Did it working at the car wash, sure. Oh. Alright, that's nice. Seat belts. Oh yeah, look at that windshield. So nice and clean. So I like, yeah, I get it. I'm basically home. Oh yeah. I made it, I made it through the day somehow. Somehow. I did it. All right, now I just gotta go in and chill. And 
Film me drinking the best glass of water of my life. Yep, all right. Just a couple hours to go here, so I am going to game. Oh yeah, a little Sims action. I played this game when I was like 10, and I'd play it for like five hours. So I think this will be really easy to kill a couple hours. Oh yeah, I made a new friend. Check it out, we're friending. Friending hard. That's a hard friendship right there. Check it out. Hi guys, so I've got about eight minutes left. You can see that, so close. Man, I'm ready. I'm very, very ready to break this fast. I weighed myself. I'm down to 131.8 with 5% body fat. 131, that's probably the lowest I've weighed since I can't remember. It's 11.48 and uh, I'm gonna check my ketones one more time just to see where I'm at there. Make sure I got enough blood going on. That looks like a healthy... So I'm 4.4. So yeah, I'm not that much more than I was on day three. Interesting. Yeah, I am not super talkative right now. I'm just like, my mouth is so dry. See my lips, my gums are looking rough. I'm ready, very, very ready. I'm ready. I like to heat up my water so I don't chug it, otherwise I will chug it. Because it's too good. It's too good. It's too good. The uh, Sims game really helped pass the time. I tell you, it's really hard to keep friends, work on your skills, and try to advance in your career. That is very hard. I didn't even have a girlfriend, okay? I was single in the game. So one thing that I really learned is like, do the things that you need to do like with your friends, man. So if you need to eat dinner, like try to like have your friends over for dinner. Genius. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, man. All right. Yeah, I am E. Grr. To break this fast. Really eager. 40 seconds. Oh man. Yeah, so I got my distill, my distilled water thing, but the first run you can't drink it. It just has a funny flavor, so I'm gonna run it a few times and clean it with vinegar and a scotch bright. Oh my god. This might be too hot. All right, ladies and gentlemen. So, as you can see, I made it! Yeah! So, I'm going to end my fast. Look at that, 168 hours and one minute. All right. Oh yeah, to health. Oh my God. something supernatural that is like oh my god mm. uh. Huh. Oh my, god. my body is agreeing very much It's 
been a while for me. <coughs> oh my god. <coughs> Feels so good to get some moisture in my mouth. Man, I really like to do it's almost hot water. Not so hot that it burns my mouth, but very warm, so like very close to hot, so it's like hard for me to drink fast. Otherwise, I'd chug it, which isn't a good idea. It's not a good idea to chug water when your body's been in the mode to conserve water. You can get water toxicity if you go too crazy, so drink it slow. Oh my god, it's so, so good. So good. I, it's like this is some kind of weird dream, like this isn't even real. I feel like my lips are already becoming unchapped. It's my body like absorbs some of this water. Oh god. Oh, I feel good. I knew that I would. Okay. Oh, wow. I gotta blow my nose. My nose is starting to run. Oh, yeah. One of the things that's really cool about fasting, it's funny, I haven't done a lot of water fasting, but try fasting anyway, is your sinuses get really, really clear. Because, yeah, a lot of times, usually when I'm eating, I don't know what it is I eat, but every so often after I eat, I'll get congestion. And not terrible. I used to get really bad. Like, every winter, I would get, like, eight sinus infections. And when I was a kid, I was on antibiotics all the time. This is before I knew I had celiacs, which compromises your immune system. But since I've been fasting, I haven't been sick once. And, yeah, so if you just do a three-day water fast, 72 hours, that completely recharges your immune system. I think all you have to do is like one or two dry fasting days and that's what you get a new immune system it triggers the stage of autophagy when you are fasting and then it stimulates stem cells to regenerate your immune system when you refeed oh my god it's so hard not to chug it <laughs> so hard I'm just gonna heat it up a little more that'll stop me chugging it i just feel like so much better my mind like is coming back so it makes me just wonder, like, is dry fasting really better than water fasting? I believe that it gets you into ketosis faster, that I am sure of, because it forces your body to burn more fat than it otherwise would to make water. Your body will make water from your fat. But once you're already in ketosis, let's see, I was 3.8 millimoles per liter, I think it is, on day three, and I only went up to 4.4 on day seven. So that's pretty similar. I mean, 3.8 is already more than you would need to be considered the ideal range for losing weight. So you're burning fat at three. So I was burning more fat at 3.8 and at 4.4, I mean, I'm just, it's crazy. So I think once you get to that state going to a water fast, I think that's better because you don't feel super great on a dry fast. And you ask yourself, you, you wonder like, is this healthy? It doesn't feel healthy. You gotta be careful with your body. Like you can't like lift heavy things and you can't really sprint you can only walk and when they do these water fasting clinics with people they have them keep exercising and lifting weights I'm not sure yet I'm excited next time I think the longest dry fast I'll ever do again is probably a five day and what's kind of cool is now that I've done a seven day a five day is gonna feel easy that's right a five day dry fast will feel easy that's just crazy to say but it's gonna feel easy it's gonna feel like I'm giving myself a break but yeah I think like I said I was in heavy ketosis on day three so I think all I'd have to do is three day dry fast which the first two days are great by the way i feel great i've got high energy my mouth isn't even dry yet i can like sing i actually had friends over on day three and we stayed up to like 12 30 and i was singing that night so that's just so weird i always used to make sure i had water when i sang and maybe my body's just adapted to it oh god i sank the warm water too it just feels good that's another reason so yeah it's harder to drink but it feels good too i like that good feeling wash Washing your hands is really fun because that just feels nasty. Like I might have said, I picked up some of these. They're just food grade gloves. So yeah, you could use latex gloves or vinyl. Sometimes they have the powder, but you get them without the powder. But I just like these because there's no smell or anything. So you can still do the laundry, you can wash your dishes, you can wear them when you go to the bathroom on the first couple of days because you don't want to be gross for people that you come in contact with later. They're super cheap and you know they're bpa free they're meant to handle food so these are essential because you got to do your housework and you got to be able to clean things and it's a great time to do laundry because it's like you're trying to pass the time so i think i'm gonna break my own rules here and i'm gonna drink more water because 
Sometimes you gotta just party. Sometimes you just gotta go for that second glass of water. I'm sorry. I know, it's like you say you're just gonna have one. You go out, you say, you know, I'll have one glass of water, I don't want to kind of mess things up, but uh, you have one and then, come on, you get the warm feeling and, and you're like, you know what would be nice? More of this. How can I get more of this? Oh, I know. I'll have another. That's right, sir. I'd like another. So I'm going to have another. I think my body can take it. I won't maybe finish this one, but I'm going to start it. Yeah, my lips, they're still not better, but they feel so much better. They were so dry. Now they feel normal. They just got dead skin on them. Yeah, it's a shame I can't drink this. This is distilled water from a still. It's the first run of it. So it says for the best tasting water, like run it three times and clean it every time in between. So I'm just going to do that. I got my reverse osmosis in the meantime, and yeah. Chase to health. Guiding you on your... Chase to health. Oh my god. You know, it's so weird. <laughs> well, I got you here. It's so weird as people, is the bone broth thing. I used to do it. I used to be paleo, actually, and I'd eat like a whole chicken. I wouldn't eat the whole chicken, but I'd like eat all the meat off the carcass, like the darkest meat, and I'd like save some of the white meat, but I'd eat most of the chicken, and then I'd take the bones, and I would make bone broth out of them. But there's like a lot of lead and toxic metals and stuff in there, and the whole idea is the collagen that you're supposed to get. Well, the problem is like, yeah, your body digests that collagen, but then it just breaks it down into amino acids, and then just reassembles it however it wants. So it's not helpful to have the whole thing. When you eat collagen, it doesn't just like go to your collagen. Your body breaks it down into the separate amino acids, absorbs the separate amino acids through your intestines, and then uses that to rebuild whatever it needs. Maybe it's collagen or whatever. So the whole idea of collagen, helping you build collagen, it's just insane. It kind of makes sense like intuitively. Like, oh yeah, if you want like to help your liver, like eat liver. But it doesn't work that way. Your body doesn't absorb a whole liver through your intestines and then just like merge that with your liver. That's not how it works. Yeah, so bone broth. I am someone that I am very open-minded. So what I believe when it comes to nutrition, I believe because I've seen evidence for it, studies and, you know, lots of different sources that I trust, you know, and sometimes the sources that I get it from, they don't agree on everything, but they agree on certain things. I'm like, well, if these two people don't agree that much, but they both agree that bone broth is just garbage for you, that makes me think, well, that's probably more true than some of the other stuff they say. So I decided that I've been kind of not doing the best refeeds. It might have held me back. I was trying to make sure I fasted like three days every week. So I would do like 80 hours of a dry fast and then I would feed for three and a half days or whatever it was. But I try to fit in like six to 7,000 calories in those days. And on that refeed day, I would start, you know, with my steamed vegetable water and then the steamed vegetables. But then I, as soon as I was feeling good, I'd go into grains, go into beans and nuts and I don't think that's a good idea so what I'm going to do now is when I fast luckily the way my schedule works I've got like 10 days off before my next fast so what I'm gonna do is uh, do it just like I do I'm gonna drink my steamed vegetable water and then eat my steamed cauliflower as much as I want you know I might eat the whole head we'll see how I feel I am just gonna do it when I wake up tomorrow and then I'm just gonna eat nothing but fruit juices and vegetable juices and vegetables and fruits and I'm just gonna keep it to fruits and vegetables Oh my god, it's so good. Wow. Words fail me. My whole body feels like I'm like flying. It's so good it feels. My brain is saying, yeah, I don't know what you've been doing all week, but I think you finally figured it out. This whole week, I don't know what you've been doing. I've been giving you the signs and you didn't do any of this. So my body's like, okay, let's really reward him this time because he's not getting it. Maybe if we really make it feel good, he's like, oh, this is what I'm supposed to drink every day. <sighs> yeah, it's so funny. I just crave like fruit juices and weird drinks. But then as soon as I drink water, I'm like, I just want regular food. And then I'm like, why did I buy that juice? I don't drink juice. Just drink a little bit every now and then. 
like a couple shots of juice in like carbonated water. Sometimes you just gotta give yourself a break though, you know? Like when you've dry fasted for seven days. So I've learned about this. I did one thing, a really good lesson about this. I was always very hard on myself, but like when you're dry fasting, it's like all your willpower is used up just getting through the day. It's almost like you're a heroin addict or something in withdrawal. Like you know what you need to feel better, but you're not gonna do it. And so you're just trying to get through the day, like hope that you'll feel better. I don't know where I was going with that. But yeah, no, it's a uh, exercise of will. So yeah, you, uh, it's just like, yeah, you didn't shovel your driveway, but it's like, who cares? Who, who cares? Like you'll get to it after you refeed, you get to everything then. You gotta give yourself a break when you're working on yourself, when you're working towards health, doing something extreme. It's like doing like chemotherapy or something. You don't say, what am I doing with my life right now? It's like, yeah, you're trying to get better. Give yourself a break, take a deep breath. Say, I'm doing something for myself and that's okay. And other people might have to wait. No, you still do your best, but it's about having priorities. Sometimes you gotta put your health first. <sighs> Well, thanks for hanging out with me this week, guys. It's been nice. It's usually pretty lonely fasting, but not lonely when I'm with you. <laughs> fasting with Mr. Rogers. You're my special friend. You're my very special friend. And special friends are special together. Now I'm gonna take off my outdoor shoes so I can put on my indoor shoes because I don't ever clean my carpet and it's probably filthy. I'm gonna heat this back up, get too warm. For those of you who are curious, here's my last urine I did before. Not much sediment at this point. Not a lot of liquid either. I don't think I could have gone much more. I think I was saying earlier, I could probably go down to 130 and be fine. But yeah, 131.8, I was ready to stop. My body was saying, let's stop, Chase. But one of the things Dr. Goldhammer said was that once you start burning away more of your fat, once your body senses that your fat is lower, it's gonna start eating other things more, you know, like your damaged cells. Cause that's what autophagy does. Autophagy means autophagy, self-eating. So your body goes around your phagocytes, if I'm saying that right, phagocytes go around and eat all your damaged cells and recycle it. I'm feeling pretty full. I drank a pretty large pint. It was like full to the brim. <laughs> Could you tell I was thirsty? I might have been thirsty. I might have been thirstier than I've ever been. Yeah, it was like unbelievable how thirsty I was. The hot water is a really good idea because my friends have always told me I've got really good self-control. They're just like, how do you do it? You know, I'll be partying with them and not drinking and not partaking in other things as well. And the truth is I don't have good self-control. What I have is I've got the manual for my body and my brain and I know how to use it to my advantage. Because once I start drinking, it's really hard to stop for me. It's the same thing with eating. When I'm hungry, the food tastes good, and I'm like super full, I know I've eaten more than I should, I know I should stop, I just keep eating. And same thing with caffeine, that's why I don't like caffeine, because it makes me feel really good for an hour. But then when I come down, that high is gone, and I'm left with all the side effects, like the jitteriness, the compromised emotional intelligence, and so I want more caffeine. But then the high isn't as good from the caffeine, and then I feel like the side effects compound, so I just find I'd rather not have it. It's kinda like sugar too. The reason why I don't like sugar is because it makes me feel really sick, but you almost want more of it. It's almost like just a shorter time frame. It's like, I feel sick right away. There was like a incredibly short, wow, this tastes good, and then, oh my God, I feel sick. It happens like quick. Caffeine takes a little longer. Alcohol, you don't feel sick until the next day. And then you can fix that by drinking more, but you didn't really fix it. You just postponed the inevitable. And then you're not drinking as much water. You're not eating. You probably didn't get good sleep. You definitely didn't get good sleep if you were drunk when you went to bed, or even if you were buzzed or you had any alcohol in your system. Same thing with caffeine. It's gonna hurt your sleep. To be healthy, it's really best to be sober. And you know, if you want to partake in caffeine, and alcohol or cigarettes or something. Make it a once in a while thing. Don't do it every day. Don't do it every day. Try not to do it two days in a row. Do it one day and say, okay, I had my day. It makes it more special that way too. It's gonna be better. Cause just after one day of doing any mind altering substance, whatever it is, illegal or legal, it's, it's all the same really. Your neurotransmitters are numbed a little bit. So you need a little more the next day. You need more for your brain, but your body doesn't need more. Your body's getting more of the side effects, more of the sickness, and it's already been compromised from the day before. So it's already trying to prepare itself and 
detoxify and then you put more toxins in it. It's like fasting is like you're doing a drug almost. The ketones. It's easier though, I feel like, than times when I was hungover and I felt like I needed a drink, like I really needed a drink. Cause if I'm hungover and I have like a Bloody Mary at lunch or something, or two, I feel incredible. I almost feel better than I did the day before drinking because that whole morning I felt so bad. And now that bad feeling went away. So it was like, oh, relief. That feeling of going through the day and wanting a drink, it's kind of like that with dry fasting because you want to drink water. But it's almost more consistent. The ketones keep your blood sugar so level that it's like, okay, I can do this, I can do this. Yeah, I don't know if any of you guys have tried dry fasting or are looking to try it. Let me know in the comments if you've done a seven day or five day or water fast or whatever fasting. If you're doing it to heal something in your body, I'm really interested in that. I tell you though, what? I started at like 56 pounds and I ended at 131, so what, I lost 24-ish pounds. Now, a lot of that was probably water, but a lot of that was fat too. I think when I did my five-day dry fast, I was curious. I was like, well, how much of this is water? So I actually collected my urine. I know it's gross, but I collected it, and I found that I lost like 10 pounds or 15 pounds, and I think five pounds of that was fat. So I think I lost like a pound a day of fat. Oh, I'm chugging. So good. So I'm probably just gonna drink these two and then I'm gonna go to bed. Yeah, it's 12.36 in the AM, the anti-meridian, if uh, you guys are familiar. Wow, I just feel so good. I feel ready to party. This water is amazing. I don't know what they put in it. Reverse osmosis, baby. I'm really excited to try that distilled water. I always thought it was unhealthy, but it's just like, why would it be unhealthy? It's water. That's what rainwater, well, it's not now because of all the gosh darn pollution, but that's what rainwater used to be like. It's condensed water vapor. That's all a distill does. It boils it into steam and collects the steam. That's how you distill alcohol too. Oh my God, it's so good. All right, I'm cutting myself off. I think you had enough. Son, look here. I'll tell you when I've had enough. Now pour me more of that devil water. Oh man, okay. So, yeah, really happy to be done. All right guys, good night. I'll probably do like a recap or something at the end tomorrow. But yeah, the beard's coming back in. Good night guys. All right guys, it's the next morning. I've already gained back four pounds or something. I'm like 136, so my body's just, all the water I drink is just holding on to it. She's good, feels great. So yeah, I am gonna do my veggies. Cauliflower, broccoli, baby carrots are just so easy. Yeah, you actually want to chop it up fairly fine so that the enzyme can start making the sulforaphane. I want to let this sit for at least 45 minutes before I cook it. I got my cauliflower here. Yeah, so a lot of people will throw away the leaves, but I actually find if I cook them, they got a little bit more chewiness to them, but they still taste good. Yeah, I'll throw those in with the carrots or something so that they cook a little more. So it's maybe not, it's not the traditional way to prepare them. That's good. So yeah, this is gonna be what I eat. First thing, cauliflower. I don't know what it is, but cauliflower just really, really agrees with me. I can't say that it'll work for everyone on their refeed, but try to think of probably a vegetable or a fruit, if you do well on fruit, that has always just sat really well with you. That's never made you feel, oh, not feeling super great. Like for me, I don't actually, like I eat fruit, but but vegetables have always been my jam. Like when I was a kid and we were up at our cabin in Ontario, I'd go missing and I would always be in the garden eating pea pods because it tasted great to me even when I was a kid. All right, so I'm gonna let these sit for 45 minutes with the broccoli and then I'm gonna steam them. I'm gonna start steaming the carrots first. Well, it's about that time to put the veggies in. I cook the carrots first because they take longer. So I cook these for about 12 minutes. And then I'm gonna cook the stems from the cauliflower and the leaves. They're chewier, so it's good to get them to be a little softer. I'm just gonna let that sit for, set the timer for 12 minutes. Technically, I'm still fasting because I've just been drinking water. It's funny how I feel so good. I haven't eaten anything for, this is the eighth day, but just having the water makes you feel like, oh, this life is really good now. <laughs> it really feels good, so. All right, I'll, I'll be back. All right, so now it's time to put the cauliflower in. I'm 
put the cauliflower in first, put the rest of this in, and then I put the broccoli on top. Because I feel like the broccoli doesn't need as much to get to where I like it. Alright, now let that cook 10 minutes. Test it here. I'm not gonna eat it, but I'm just testing it. I think it's good. Turn it off. Then, I'm gonna pour it in some water. That hot. Pour it in a glass for me to drink. Now that's gonna be too hot, probably. Cool it down, I'm gonna put it in another glass one. Swirl it around a bit, dissipate that heat. And then, put it in a glass. All right, first nutrition. So yeah, really it was 170 something hours. Almost like 180 hour food fast. Oh man, that's really, really good. I'm gonna sit down for this. Oh yeah. Oh my god. It's so good. It's like the carrots are a little sweet. The broccoli is a little like, it's got a little bit of a bitterness to it. And the cauliflower just, the cauliflower is like buttery. It tastes like butter to me. It's one of the good things about fasting. If you have a food addiction, it resets your taste buds. Your body's like, any food? This is amazing. When you're eating all day, every day, you need more and more stimulation in your brain. It's an addiction. Now, the other thing you can do, you can do a mono diet where you just eat one thing. So you can eat potatoes, I think is a good one. Nothing but potatoes, because you can live off that. You do it for two weeks, and in two weeks, like if you eat something all saucy and sugary and sweet, and it just tastes gross to you, so. So yeah, I'm gonna drink this and then I'm gonna sit on it for maybe an hour or so. <sighs> it's weird, there's like no garlic in here or like any other flavor, but like my mouth is just like picking up on all these extra flavors. Oh my god. Yeah, so some people do juices, but this is like the best thing in the world. It's vegetable broth, basically, that's what it is. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to get your stomach back to digesting, releasing enzymes and stuff like that. If you just go ahead and like eat normally, you'll have to run to the bathroom. Or depending on what you eat, if you eat like a steak or something, you might like get ill. Oh my god. It's so so good. It's funny though, when people get depressed, I used to struggle with depression a lot. Nothing will snap you out of depression than like feeling like you're gonna die. You wanna live. Your instinct is to live. So if you push yourself to starvation and dehydration, it's like, no, I wanna, I want that water. I want that food. They used to fast people that had mental illness and it worked. <sighs> I'm chugging it a little too fast. It's so good though. And so again, I think it's nice to do hot liquids because it's hard to chug something really hot. Oh yeah. It's good. All right, so now I'm gonna wait an hour before I eat anything. All right, so I waited an hour and now I'm gonna eat a couple cups of cauliflower. Probably one would be better, but I'm so hungry that I've earned it. Mm. So make sure on your refeed, you chew your food like almost annoyingly long. It's gonna be hard. It's hard for me. Put down the fork. Yeah, so all the people that they rescued from Auschwitz, they just like fed them whatever they want. Like a lot of people died. Yeah, I think even if I was a meat eater, I don't think I'd even want to eat a steak right now or any kind of meat. It's really good, but this definitely isn't the best cauliflower I had. I think it was last time I broke my six day fast. The cauliflower tasted like, it tasted like I was eating butter. It was ridiculous. This still has a buttery taste, but that was like otherworldly. I think the great thing about steamed vegetables is that they're easy to chew. I think it's easy to get them really chewed up. Well, there you have it, guys. From start to refeed. I don't think I'll ever do a seven day dry fast again. It was a little intense, <laughs> but I think I'll probably do a three to five day dry fast, depending on how my schedule works that week. And then I'm just gonna go into a water fast for however long I feel. Cause I think once I start drinking water, I feel really good. So I feel like not having that water, I think is a good catalyst for getting into ketosis faster, but I fear that you're losing some of the health benefits by not giving yourself water. And like I said before, if you use distilled water, yeah, the whole theory of dry fasting is that your body makes your own water and it's very it's very pure water. It's like chemistry water, basically. If you're giving yourself pure water, then I think that would be better than dry fasting. 
And that's what I'm gonna try to do and I'm gonna keep at it. But yeah, I feel great right now. My lips healed completely. They were really chapped. But as soon as I started drinking water, I brushed my teeth last night. Oh my God, it was amazing. I didn't floss right away because my gums were like looking kind of nasty. So I just used my water flosser. I have a water flosser. Then I brushed and then I used the TheraBreath Healthy Gums mouthwash. Went to bed and next morning my mouth feels great. But yeah, I drank two pints of water, heavy pints of water. And then I I brought another pint to bed. I maybe drank half of it before I went to bed. And I woke up and my mouth was still dry. So my body was still dehydrated. It takes a while to rehydrate. So yeah, thanks for watching everyone. If you liked the video, please hit the like button and please subscribe for more videos about health. It's a big passion of mine. So I love to share what I've learned with all of you. And if you have any questions, I love to give health advice. So yeah, all right, thanks for watching. <laughs>